In the early months of the Galactic Empire's rule, a formidable assault on the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk was carried out, led by Darth Vader. He had received intel from Imperial spies that the Wookiees harboured a survivor of the Great Jedi Purge, named Kento Marek. After eliminating any resistance in his way, Vader located the Jedi and defeated him in combat, but sensed a far more powerful force nearby. Preparing to face Kento's master, he instead found Kento's young son, Galen, who used the force to disarm the Sith Lord. Vader saw great potential in him and defended him from Imperial troops. He was taken as his secret apprentice, beginning a new chapter in his life as he embarked on a path filled with darkness. In time, all memories of his parents and his past life faded. Under Vader's secretive training, Galen honed his force abilities and combat skills, adopting the codename Starkiller. His new purpose was to serve as an assassin for Vader, hunting down and eliminating Jedi survivors who had managed to evade the Great Jedi Purge. Starkiller's missions were carried out covertly, and his existence was kept hidden from the Emperor, as Vader plotted to use him in his own bid for power. The rule of two forbid the existence of more than two Sith at one time, and as long as Vader served his master, Starkiller could not consider himself a true Sith. He was desperate to prove himself to Vader, and believed his destiny was to help him overthrow Sidious and rule at his side. In his final trials, Galen was commanded to locate and eliminate three Jedi Masters, Ram Kota, Kazdan Paratus, and Shark T. With the support of his personal pilot, Juno Eclipse, and his training droid, Proxy, he fulfilled his master's bidding. When Starkiller returned to Vader victorious, he came face to face with the Emperor, his spies having learnt of his existence. In a calculated move to prove his loyalty to Sidious, Vader quickly cut down his apprentice and hurled him into space. However, Starkiller's body was secretly recovered and revived by Vader's science vessel, the Empirical. Forced back into servitude, Vader gave Galen his most important mission yet, to foster a rebellion among the Empire's enemies. The goal was to divert the Emperor's attention and resources, providing Vader with an opportunity to overthrow him. Galen first rescued Juno, who had been branded a traitor to the Empire following his supposed death. He assured her that he no longer had allegiance to the Empire or Vader, and shared his plan to create a rebel army to oppose the Empire. He reunited with a blinded Ram Kota, who had been reduced to alcoholism. He convinced him that he too was a Jedi, and together they formed a bond of trust and embarked on a quest to gather allies for the rebellion. One key ally Starkiller sought was Bail Organa, a senator known for his resistance against the Empire. By rescuing Bale's daughter, Princess Leia, on Kashyyyk, and liberating enslaved Wookiees, Starkiller gained Bale's trust and convinced him to join the Rebellion's cause. To further solidify the Rebellion's presence, Starkiller led an assault on a Star Destroyer factory on Raxus Prime, even pulling an Imperial Star Destroyer out of orbit. This demonstration of the Empire's vulnerability served as a rallying cry for others seeking freedom from Imperial oppression. However, when Galen made contact with Vader to notify him of his success, Juno learned that Starkiller still served Vader, and yet she still chose to remain silent. As the rebellion gained momentum, a final move was made to draw out the Empire's enemies. On the planet Corellia, Bail Organa met with fellow senators Mon Mothma and Garm Bel Iblis to formally structure a rebellion but their meeting was cut short by an assault from Darth Vader and the Senators were arrested. The Dark Lord overpowered Starkiller, revealing his true intentions all along. Starkiller had been a pawn, a means to an end. He was simply a tool used to squash the rebellion before it had even started, and it was never in Vader's interest to overthrow the Emperor with Galen at his side. Whilst Vader prepared to strike an injured Galen as he desperately clung to a cliff edge, his loyal training droid Proxy attacked in the form of Obi-Wan Kenobi. As Vader put down his attacker, Galen lost his grip on the cliff edge and fell. Fortunately, he survived the fall, and when he regained consciousness, he was recovered by Juno. 
Finally free of his former master's influence, Galen rejected his codename of Starkiller, and for the first time considered himself to be a Jedi. Galen entered a deep state of meditation in an attempt to save the Rebellion by tracking down both Vader and the Senators. Despite managing to locate his targets on the unfinished Death Star, he was almost overwhelmed by the number of possible futures laid out before him. In a daring mission to rescue Jedi General Kota and the captive Senators, Galen infiltrated the Death Star. After battling through a large number of enemy infantry, he made his way to the throne room. There, he faced both Vader and the Emperor, who goaded him to kill Vader and take his place. It is here that a choice is given to Galen and the player. Kill Vader and accept the dark side, or choose the light by saving General Kota from the Emperor. The official ending to this particular story is the light side ending, and is as follows. As they battled, Sidious revealed to Galen that it was him that ordered his abduction from Kashyyyk as a child. The Emperor had always been his true master, with Vader merely serving as a surrogate, a proxy. Strengthened by the rage he felt, Galen pressed his attack against Sidious, throwing him against the ceiling of the domed room before slamming him back down to the ground. Here, Sidious attempted to convince the young Jedi to strike him down and give in to his hatred, but with Kota's urging, Galen stepped down. Exclaiming that neither the rebels or Jedi could ever have Galen, the Emperor rose to his feet, blasting lightning into the back of General Kota. Advancing on the Emperor, Galen stepped into the stream without hesitation. In the ultimate sacrifice, Galen absorbed the Force entirely, releasing all of the built-up energy in a powerful shockwave that allowed Kota and the Senators to escape, ensuring the survival of the Rebellion. With his final thoughts on Juno Eclipse, Galen Merrick died and became one with the Force. Much to the concern of the Emperor and Vader, Starkiller's death served as an example to the newly formed Rebellion. Inspired by his sacrifice, the Rebels would see Galen as a martyr and were motivated to complete what he had begun, a full-scale uprising against the Empire. If the player should choose the dark side in their battle with Sidious, an alternate unofficial ending will occur. After killing Darth Vader, Starkiller receives praise from the Emperor who then commands him to sever his ties to the light by killing Kota. Instead, Galen attacks the Emperor, who crushes him with his own ship, the Rogue Shadow, killing Juno, Kota, and all of the Senators on board the Death Star. Starkiller later awakens to discover his body being grafted with armor so that he can serve as Sidious' side, though he is told that he will be replaced once a superior apprentice is found, just as Vader before him. However, the story of Galen Merrick does not end there. On the cloning facilities of Kamino, a clone of Starkiller was created under Darth Vader's watchful eye. Haunted by fragmented memories of his past life, the clone was unable to eliminate a training droid portraying Juno Eclipse, the original Starkiller's love interest, and his failed attempts branded him a disappointment in Vader's eyes. The clone of Galen Marrick recalled Vader's betrayal of Starkiller, knowing that the Sith Lord would likely have him killed as well. In an effort to discover who he really was and escape Vader's influence, the clone stole Vader's TIE Fighter and escaped to the Imperial facility. In order to lure the clone back to him, Vader hired feared bounty hunter Boba Fett to capture Juno Eclipse. Galen Merrick journeyed to the Imperial-controlled planet of Cato Nemoidia to save General Kota, who had been forced to fight in a gladiatorial arena by Baron Tarko, the planet's ruler. After a lengthy battle against a monstrous beast called the Gorog, the two men escaped after Kota summoned the original Starkiller's ship, the Rogue Shadow. Kota claimed that Jedi could not be cloned, and invited him to join the rebels in their fight against the tyrannical Empire despite Galen's insistence that he was not Starkiller and does not want to be involved. Declining, he left Kota and headed to Dagobah, where he met with Jedi Grandmaster Yoda. Whilst on the Swamp Planet, Galen used the Force to locate Juno, the one constant memory of happiness from his past life. He tracked her to her medical ship, Salvation, 
but arrived too late to stop Boba Fett and experimental Imperial forces from leaving with Juno. Despite being aware of Vader's plan to lure him back to Kamino, Galen, fueled by love and a sense of responsibility, convinced General Kota and the Rebel fleet to stage a full-scale assault on the cloning facility. Amidst the chaos of the battle on Kamino, Galen faced a haunting confrontation with his own clones, a twisted reflection of himself. As he fought his way through these dark versions of himself, Galen was ultimately confronted by Darth Vader, the very embodiment of his past betrayal and torment. Vader revealed Juno, threatening her life to force Galen to submit. Juno attempted to attack Vader with Galen's lightsaber, but was seemingly killed before Galen's eyes. Consumed by rage and grief, Galen unleashed the full extent of his powers, subduing Vader with force lightning just as Kota and his men approached. Vader attempted to provoke Starkiller into killing him, but Kota argued that the rebels needed him alive to extract the Empire's secrets. Again, Galen Merrick and the player are given a choice. Accept the light and spare Vader, or let in the dark side and take revenge for all the pain and torment his former master caused him. The canonical ending of the game is again the outcome of choosing the light side. Galen's desire for revenge was outweighed by his love for Juno, prompting him to spare Vader's life and choose a path of compassion even for his greatest enemy. With the revelation that Juno was still alive, Vader was arrested by the rebels and imprisoned on board the rogue Shadow. Galen informs him that he is free of the Dark Lord's grip, since he chose to spare him of his own free will. Vader responded that as long as Juno lives, he will always have control over him. The story comes to a close as Galen and Juno prepare to travel to hyperspace, unaware of Boba Fett's ship Slave One following them. An alternate, unofficial ending will occur should the player choose the dark side. In a moment of despair and fury, Galen succumbs to his darker impulses and attempts to execute Vader. However, he is met with a shocking twist when a dark clone of himself emerges, impaling and killing him. Uncaring and devoid of compassion, the dark clone steps over Juno's lifeless body, leaving to fulfill his master's bidding. If you enjoyed this video on the complete story of Starkiller, then make sure to check out our Star Wars Legends series where we take a closer look at the early timeline of the Star Wars galaxy.